the Christmas story is just so simple. It's one of the things that's amazing about it. But in addition to the simplicity of it, the fact of the matter is, is miraculous. Just as we saw right there, the Christmas story is just full of miracles. The amazing miracles. You know, babies are born every day. I don't know exactly the number I was going to look it up, but I decided not to. But I know it's in the millions of babies that are born just all the time. A baby being born is not necessarily, in the world's view, something that's an uncommon thing. It happens uh, every day all over the world. So why is it miraculous, this baby that was born? I'm going to tell you something today, that if you can get your arms around it, and it's, it's hard to do because I've had a difficult time doing it. I've spent a lot of time trying to. Get your arms around this, and you'll find that this is awesome. This baby that we're celebrating the birth, this baby that we've sung about today and that the kids sang about, the story that we read, this baby is God. God. The baby is God. <laughs> God is the creator of all things. Say all things. God is the creator of all things. There is nothing left out of all. I was telling my son about that driving over here today. Everything's included in all. The creator of all things. God, the creator of all things, came to this planet in human form and was born as a baby just as every other baby was. It was different. All things. Think about that. How many have seen leaves in our parking lot since you've been coming here? Come on now. <laughs> we have struggled with those leaves. I actually had one that I was going to use as an example, but I don't have it right now. I looked the other day at those thousands of leaves that we have to blow off and do it two or three times a week just to keep it just presentable. And I picked up one, I picked up another one, and I looked at them, and they all look very similar. Very similar, very pretty too, except when they're laying on the ground like that. <laughs> and I looked at them, and they're similar, but they're different. Each one was different. And I started to think, God is the creator of all things. The baby we're talking about is creator of all things. He created those leaves. I know that may sound like it doesn't matter. Think about it now. Think about how many leaves you're going to drive by today on both sides of the road that are just, I, we, my son and I did it today. I said, count the leaves, Jackson, on the way in. He says, I can't do that. There's too many. Of course there are. But each one was given life by the creator. God is the creator of all things. And Jesus, when he came into this earth as a baby, he came as God. Every blade of grass, every flower, every grain of sand that came from whatever it was and however it got there, created by God. So the first part of this story is, is that God created us as well. Each one of you today, he created you because he is the creator of all things. And some of you may think, well, Pastor Billy, I wish he'd have done a little better job of creating me. I wish he'd have made me a little prettier, a little smarter, a little wiser, a little wealthier, <laughs> whatever it might be. But God doesn't make mistakes. He created you with love and uniqueness, just like the leaves on the ground. There's no two alike. And he gave you life. The creator of all things. Colossians 1.16 says this. For by him all things were created. There it is. For by him all things were created in heaven and on earth. Visible and invisible. Whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities. All things, say all things. All things were created through him and for him. All things. Rulers. Authorities. You think people in this world think they have power? They do as to whatever extent that people grant it to them. 
But the creator of all things created all of the economy that runs the governments of the world. There's no question there's one in charge. There's one single entity in charge. Look at this in 17th verse of Colossians 1. So it says all things were created through him and for him. And then it says this. And he is before all things. And in him all things hold together. Think about that. All things in him hold together. That means without him, it's not going to be a good situation. Some people think, well, this world's pretty messed up now. Yeah, that's right. We broke it. We broke it. But man, if God removed his hand from this world, what do you think? What could it be? In him, so he was before all things, he created all things, and in him, all things hold together. That's the God that was born as the baby in the manger. So it was miraculous. But the other part of the story is, is that because of things that happen, it's a crisis. We broke, all of us, mankind, men and women, since Adam and Eve, we broke God's heart. I think I break his heart a lot, I, I hate to say. I wish I didn't. Not as much as I used to break it. But we broke his heart because of disobedience. And also, not only did we just break his heart, we broke everything in this world. All the things that said, well, why does God allow this? Or why does this happen? What goes on in these situations? Why is it God? We are the responsible party. Get your arms around this now. We broke it. Everything that's broken in this world was because of sin. And that came from man. Men and women like us. Messing stuff up. I'm not saying that to say anybody's a bad person here. I don't think there is. I think God created bad people, but we make mistakes. There's good news coming. But here's what Isaiah 24, 5 says about this. The earth suffers for the sins of its people. When he wrote that hundreds of years ago, centuries ago now, it's still the same today. It's still the same. The earth suffers today because of the sins of its people, folks. For they have twisted God's instructions, violated his laws, and broken his everlasting covenant. That's Isaiah 24, 5. We don't have these on the screen, unfortunately, today. We twisted God's instructions. So there's a crisis that we've created. The miracle baby comes in to a world in crisis. And now all of us here today, everyone in the world, whether they think they are or not, we're on a journey in this life to go and try to, to find. That's since the fall of man, man has been on a pursuit to find its way back to life, to find its way back to love, to find its way back to the wonderful creation that God made when he created all things. But ultimately, if we're pursuing those paths on our own, you and I, we will run into a dead end because there's only so much we're capable of doing. And that's where the story continues and where it really gets good. Because, yes, there was a miracle born. God came into the earth born as a baby, a creator of all things. But the world was in crisis. And people in this world, even today, are on a journey back to find God. Even if they don't know that's what they're looking for, what they're looking for ultimately is Him. And it just gets to a place where you'd realize you can't get there. But the story continues, and it gets really interesting here. This baby, God that came into the earth, Jesus, he came to restore. Jesus came to this earth to restore all that's broken. Everything that we messed up, everything that got messed up, he came to restore it. And he said that, John 8, 12, he said it in many places, but in John the 8th chapter, the 12th verse, he said this. Jesus spoke to the people once more and said, I am the light of the world. If you follow me, say that part with me, if you follow me, you know that if is there. 
like for a reason. Very, Jesus didn't say anything unintentionally. He knew exactly what he was saying, when he was saying it, why he was saying it. If you follow me, you won't have to walk in darkness because you will have the light that leads to life. Following Jesus is following a light that leads you back, back to life, back to love. Back to the place that he created at the beginning. Back to that place. And how do we get there? Well, Jesus, because he came and restored, that completed the story. That completes it all. So here's the thing, folks, today. We can accept Jesus. We can accept him. And we can live at peace with God. We can live in peace with him. We can live in peace with others. All of our family members. You saw some of the things on the screen. People that we have difficulties with. Whatever. You can live in peace. You can do that. We can accept him. And live in peace with God and with others. No matter what the circumstances. And here's the great thing. And I want everybody to really listen to this. Because of Jesus. Because of this baby. Who came. Miraculously. Into a world in crisis. With people trying to figure out where to go and how to get there. He came to restore and to rescue. Because of him and why he came. And what he did. We, each of you here today. Who are here in this place and who may be hearing me now or later. Listen to this. We have the opportunity to live in the presence of an almighty all-powerful, all-knowing, all-loving God for all of eternity. For all of eternity. Now, God, the creator of all things in heaven and earth, the scripture says that we just read earlier, has a way that we, did, we talk about it as heaven. How many have thought about heaven before? How many know what it's going to be like? You know, we can have, there's great books written about it. There's a lot of people who've talked about it. There are some things we can glean from Scripture about eternity in heaven. But the main thing is this. 1 Corinthians 2, 9. And this is what makes it incredible to me. Absolutely awesome. This God that came as a baby to put the rescue plan in place, to fix it, to give us the opportunity to be in his presence for eternity, that when we pass from this earth, that's not the end. That's the beginning of eternity in the presence of a God in a place that the scripture says this, 1 Corinthians 2, 9. No eye has seen, no ear has heard, no mind has imagined what God has prepared for those who love him. Folks, you can read all the books you want. Go to every internet site, listen to the most prolific speakers and scholars on this subject, and they won't be able to scratch the surface of what heaven would be like. And I'm not saying that. That's what the scripture says. We've not seen it. We've not heard it. And in fact, our minds can't imagine what God has set up for us. It's going to be beyond anything that we could think or imagine. That's a place I want to be. And let me say this to you today. That's the place I want all of you to be with me. Don't miss it. Don't miss it. Because you can. Because the world's broken. So today, each of you in this room have a choice to make. Maybe some of you have made that choice. All of you haven't. Does that sound like that's mean? It's not. All of you haven't. You have the chance today to decide so we can accept Jesus and live at peace with God and with others or we can reject him.